Anguilla the Knight, fellow Anguillians, I am humbled to stand before you this evening as an island-wide candidate in the 2020 general election. My journey to this platform has not been a bed of roses, but I stand here ready to continue my service to my country as the highest level as an elected member of parliament. Robert Greenlee is quoted as saying, the first and most important choice a leader makes is the choice to serve, without which one's capacity to lead is severely limited. And Williams, I have chosen to serve my country and my service to country began long before I entered into the political arena. I am sure you would have heard my mother say how I was enrolled in the Brownie Guides and then later the Girl Guides at a young age. But it was there where that guide promise became more than words recited. It evolved into a personal mantra of mine. I promise that I will do my best to love my God, to serve my country, to help other people, and above all else, do no harm. Running as an island-wide candidate is my contribution. It is the ultimate form of service to my country. The decision to run as an island-wide candidate was an easy one, as my roots are spread far and wide across this island. You see, when I go to Island Harbor, they fondly retell stories of my great-grandfather, Henry Reed, known to many of them as Million, and my mother, Sherilyn Hart, who went to Island Harbor School with them. In District 3, Nostalgia kicks in, as I recall many summer days running around sunny ground between yellow banana and the bush they now call tackling. I know I am in District 3 when people approach me and say, Are you slow the daughter? You look, talk, and act just like her. District 7 is the only place I have ever called home in Anguilla. As a child on Sunday mornings, I would be dressed to the nines, frilly socks and all, heading to Emmanuel Methodist Church. It was there I delighted in hearing a late brother Claudio Hodge make that organ come alive to the hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold? Therefore, it should come as no surprise why I chose the anchor as my symbol, a symbol, a symbol of strength, a symbol of hope, a symbol of stability. That song, Will Your Anchor Hold, has taken me to many trying times. But District 7 represents the parts of me that I take the most pride in. It is where my close-knit family is from. It is where my love for volunteerism was reignited as a tutor at the Alvin Allison Richardson Primary School back in 2011. I told you, my service to a country did not start in 2019, it didn't start in 2020, and it will not end after July 20, June 29th. West End District 7 is also where I founded the 8th Anguilla Guide Company. But most importantly, it is where I proudly enrolled my daughter into school and became even more integrated in the life of the school. 
Now, and we're just saying, you just listen to me. District 7 is home. But this district right here, District 4, District 4 raised me. And tonight, it only made sense to come back to District 4. Having attended the St. Mary's Preschool and right next door, the Valley Primary School, I was a part of this community. So much so that my classmates thought I lived in the valley. Mind you, they did as well. Perhaps it is because Jesse and Josie never missed an opportunity to remind people who visit that I grew up right in that house down there. I know tonight they are beaming with pride given the bold step I have made. And brilliance, throughout the past year, I have heard many people claim the young candidates lack experience. And often the retort is, well, how shall they gain experience if not on the job? My journey, however, to this point, speaks to the notion of investing in our people and being receptive to gaining on the returns. I am ever grateful for the opportunities afforded to me as a member of the Angola National Youth Council and the National Youth Ambassador Corps, which are both youth organizations geared towards youth development and youth participation in governance. However, it was my time spent as CARICOM Youth Ambassador and as a member in the Anguilla National Youth Parliament that truly, that truly catapulted me in this arena, igniting my love for legislation and policy creation. Through the CARICOM Youth Ambassador Corps and the Anguilla Youth Parliament, I have established ties with regional counterparts some of whom are also now senators and ranking members of parliament in their respective countries. And Williams, I didn't just wake up and decide I was going to run. I trained for this. I prepared for this. So tonight I am telling you that I too can say on day one I am ready, ready to lead, ready to lead, not just locally, but regionally as well. And girl, you have invested in me. Through you, I have gained this experience. And I am saying, now is the time to capitalize on that investment. Now is the time to capitalize on that investment. On June 29th, vote the anchor and let me, your investment, walk on your behalf. I have chosen I have chosen to run my campaign on the theme, providing support, fulfilling and will us hope. And the reason for this is simple. Our people are our greatest resource. If we invest in them and provide them with the support needed to achieve self-actualization, in return, we will see and will flourish. We will see Anguilla and her people achieve the hopes and dreams of our forebears who 53 years ago fought valiantly for a better Anguilla, a better way of life. An Anguilla where her people will do more than barely survive, and a, but rather an Anguilla where the people will thrive in prosperity. Tonight, I will lay out my plans to provide the necessary support needed to put our people 
on a path of success, focusing on education, social development, with a particular interest in youth development, and an innovative take on economic development, I will try to illustrate how we can once again return Anguilla to her enviable status as the gem of the Caribbean. As a matter of priority, I am prepared to provide support for our education system. Malcolm X rightfully stated, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Our children are our future teachers, leaders, doctors, lawyers, electricians, plumbers, restaurateurs, hoteliers, CEOs and CFOs, but we have to build a solid foundation for them now. Our students, teachers, and parents deserve various levels of support. Now, I want you to understand something about me. I do not believe in tearing down that which works, but rather, I believe in addressing that which is not working and clearly something it is not working nationally our mathematics grades at the primary level consistently continue to be dismal to counter this as i do not intend to just speak about the issues that are present but to provide you with solutions I have committed to restructuring the early primary education system, specifically kindergarten to grade three, placing a focus on the basics, reading, writing, and arithmetic. I think earlier I heard my dad said the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. There is no reason that our students should continue a trend that has been happening for far too long, and that is they have been falling through the cracks of a system that is heavily focused on an ever-expanding curriculum. Our teachers, and I know them, I hear them, I hear your concerns, I have spoken to them, and they say to me that they are forced to raise through a syllabus geared towards examinations rather than placing an emphasis on learning and retention. There is absolutely no reason that in 2020 and beyond, we should have students heading into secondary school with a limited grasp of literacy and numeracy. Perhaps I am driven by the motto of my primary school alma mater aim for excellence. When I envision a future where our students are given the necessary tools and resources to succeed, building the physical structures is only but the first step. And we have all seen the physical structures go up. However, it is what happens between those walls that reinforces the idea that every child is valuable and that every child is entitled to quality and equitable education. The student to teacher ratio is another area of concern that I intend to address. No longer is it acceptable for one single teacher to be assigned a class of 25 plus students with varying levels of learning abilities. I am committed to ensuring that there is a standard policy geared towards assessing and tracking students' progress, which will allow for the most suitable placement of each student. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the need to 
integrate e-learning platforms into our classrooms. At this time, I must commend the Department of Education, the parents, teachers, and students who continue to navigate the various platforms and the adaptation to them with very little notice. If we are going to integrate e-learning into our classrooms, internet access in every classroom is a must. And it breaks my heart today to stand here before you and tell you that at this present time, that is not the case. Our classrooms must be equipped for optimal learning. Now, I don't know many persons and who work in offices who will go to work in a space that is hot and humid and not serviced by air conditioning. Yet, that is expected every day of our teachers and students. This is clearly not an environment that is conducive to learning, especially given the, as, especially now as we experience rising temperatures. Ladies and gentlemen, these issues plague both the primary and secondary schools alike. However, the secondary system over the years have managed to provide a solid record of academic offerings, notwithstanding the shaky foundation some students receive at the primary level. However, the technical and vocational aspects of our secondary system must be revamped. And that includes a shift in the mindsets of our people. For far too long, technical and vocational training is seen as less than or not as desirable as those on an academic track. But in this world and our country does not survive on only those who are academically inclined or those who pursue jobs in an academic field. The chefs, the tailors, the, the artists, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, masons, the nail technicians, the makeup artists, barbers and hairdressers are all equally valuable and required in our society. We must provide them the opportunity to leave school with a basic recognizable and accepted form of certification in their field of choice. It, mu it must be noted and highlighted that providing the necessary support to our teachers and recognition for their efforts is the bedrock of achieving the advancements required in our education system. Social development remains one of the most undersolved areas of our community. The most valuable in our society deserves more than the obligatory political rhetoric regurgitating every political cycle. Particular emphasis must be placed on ensuring that our elderly continue to live full and meaningful lives. And not burdened by the cost of health care and medications, which many times are not available at the Health Authority of Anguilla's Pharmacy, forcing them to seek costlier alternatives. Additionally, stronger social nets must be put in place to identify and assist those most in need. For some, COVID-19 exacerbated an already precarious situation, though because of that resilient pride that runs through the DNA of every Anguillian, there may be a lack of awareness 
of the reality faced by many. A permanent unemployment social security benefit, along with a national pension scheme, will mitigate some of the stress felt by our people during times of economic uncertainty. Now I'm going to pause here because I truly want you to listen to what I'm about to say. No longer can we as politicians be comfortable taking home the lion's share of pensions and the backs of the civil service. All this while the majority of our workforce in the tourism industry, many of whom work two to three jobs just to make ends meet, leave their jobs after decades without nearly a penny in the form of a pension. The fact that so many people are working several jobs to make ends meet due to low wages and a lack of a minimum wage that has been used and dangled as a carrot by politicians for years is another issue that must be addressed. We cannot ignore the societal ills that follow when parents are not at home. We cannot pretend not to know and do nothing about the exorbitant cost of living in Anguilla. Utilities increasing, grocery bills not reflecting the recent duty-free concessions, and do not, do not get me started on the cost of gasoline. Anguilla has one of the highest gas prices per gallon in the region, even with the recent token reduction. Dominica sits at about seven EC a gallon, while the BBI boasts of gas in the three US dollar range. This, when last have we seen gas in Anguilla at three US dollars? This is not acceptable. Therefore, this leads me so this leads me to propose the establishment of a consumer protection agency, which is one way to protect our citizens from unscrupulous business practices. Anguilla must position itself as a country where one can live, work, and raise families if we are going to curtail the ever-increasing brain drain phenomenon. As a young person, I am keenly aware that while there are many programs available for the youth of Anguilla, most remain woefully underfunded, which disproportionately affects the youth of this country. But it's not all that. The Anguilla Get Set program remains a shining light of which I am proud to continue to serve as a trainer. But it is in this role where I have been able to closely scrutinize and evaluate the effectiveness of the program. Suffice to say, there is so much more that can be done. And on June 29th, when you elect me, your, one of your four island-wide candidates, under the symbol, the anchor, I intend to do it. I am particularly intrigued by the Get Set program as it directly relates to an aspect of our economic development. It strengthens our cadre of small businesses, which are the lifeline of the economy, especially now during the economic fallout from the global pandemic. The creation of a small business agency tasked with identifying and eliminating the barriers to, establish, to the establishment of local small businesses will form part of my plan to elevate Anguilla's status as a center of excellence for the business-minded. This will be especially important as I would explore the idea of creating an incubator-type environment for tech startup companies 
essentially making Anguilla the Caribbean Silicon Valley. This is made easy because we can take advantage of the opportunities presented as a result of our weather coupled with our status as a low tax jurisdiction. In turn, this will allow us to find our niche in the financial services industry, focusing on the area of technology and artificial intelligence. And without having hit the jackpot, being issued the dot AI domain name, and everyone knows that AI is synonymous with artificial intelligence, will allow us to utilize this direct foreign income to invest in our people without raising the taxes on them. This is the Anguilla we deserve. Anguillians, this is the Anguilla we dream of living in. Make it a reality. 2020 was heralded as a year of perfect vision and clarity. But we all know the reality has been much different and we've been hit with many curveballs. balls. At this moment in our development, we need an anchor. We need an anchor to keep the heart and soul of this country. Steadfast and sure while the billows of life roll. On June 29th, vote the symbol of hope. Vote the symbol of strength and stability. Vote the anchor. Vote for me, Glenniva Hart, as one of your four island-wide candidates. As I close this evening, it would be remiss of me not to thank those of you who have come out in support. Most importantly, I would like to thank those who have been a pillar of strength throughout my campaign. It has been almost a year, and you have stayed with me from the beginning, and we welcome those of you who are now coming on board to vote the anchor on June 29th. May God continue to bless, guide, and protect Anguilla and her people. Before, please stay and enjoy the entertainment provided by DJ Bless, a local young artist. And we must do more to invest in our young people so that they can return and give back. Please also patronize the bar and restaurant at Changes. Remember, on June 29th, are you listening? On June 29th, anchor your bells and vote for me, Glenniva Hodge, your next island-wide representative. The under the symbol, the anchor. Thank you. Good night.